Hello, I'm Mark Martinez, and this is Student-Led World History, and this is a suit that you all voted for. Next episode, I don't know what I'm going to wear, but it probably won't be terrible. Maybe. Today we're going to talk about the Renaissance and the Age of Exploration, two events pertaining to the 14th and 15th centuries that are often cited as the beginning of European domination in the areas of colonialism, technology, and pizza. Speaking of pizza, let's go to Italy. Italy was the starting point of what we see as the Renaissance. Remember the second episode where we talked about Mediterranean trade? Yeah, me neither. But here's a little recap. Italy is broken up into merchant republics, which are little industrial centers and were very hard to unify. They also became rich from trading with the Islamic world. And you have to be a pretty wealthy society to have the time to, you know, like, make art instead of farm. Much of the art was commissioned by patrons, powerful, political, or otherwise simply rich people who could cover the living fees of an artist. But what was the Renaissance really? Well, it was a rediscovery of ancient Greek and Roman works. But how did they get to Italy, I hear you asking, assuming you know they got to Italy? Well, when Constantinople fell in 1453, many Byzantine scholars fled to Italy, bringing lots of scholarly stuff with them, including the texts of philosophers like Plato and Aristotle. These works inspired the humanist movement, which originally pertained just to participation in the humanities, but became a study of the human condition. Now you're probably thinking, wow, it looks like the humanist movement would have really weakened the grip of the Catholic Church and led to increased learning across all of Europe. Well, not exactly, and here's where everything gets a little bit complicated, so bear with me. To say the Renaissance as a historic event is a bit of a mischaracterization. It was a series of not clearly connected events that occurred in roughly the 14th and 15th centuries in Europe. But the Renaissance never really spread to the people across Europe. Really only artists and scholars experienced the Renaissance. And the idea of a Renaissance or rebirth kind of assumes that Europe is a bit isolated when it was enlightened with the Greeks, fell out of it for an odd millennia, and then came back into the limelight. This is a very convenient notion to say that Europeans suddenly came to the forefront of global politics because they got some secret Greek sauce. But the Renaissance did spread beyond Italy, largely facilitated by the Gutenberg printing press, and when it got northern enough, we have another name for it. The Northern Renaissance. Historians aren't very creative with their names. The Northern Renaissance in a lot of ways wasn't very different. There was humanism and an emergence of new art, and it still didn't really spread to the population. Most notably different are the subject matter and techniques in art, but also humanism kind of went crazy. Let me explain. A lot of the scholastic tradition of Europe was changing. More time was spent discussing humanism, like the organization of societies and the nature of the human condition. Many new intellectuals brought humanism into the political realm, most notable of these being Erasmus. But we're out of time to talk about smart people. Let's talk about boats. Okay, so we need to mention the Ottomans one more time, get used to it. They built boats and controlled trade along the Mediterranean for the most part. So to land some sweet spices and avoid tariffs, European navigators tried to use the Atlantic Ocean to get to India. In short, these voyages got longer and longer and went to new places, and maritime empires started forming, the first of these being Portugal, which was often called a trading post empire. Portugal then used its new wealth to do more voyages and make more ships, and eventually with its Iberian comrade Spain, they established themselves as the richest and most seagoing European nations, for a couple years at least. And I'm sure that you all know that Christopher Columbus, a Genoese sailor who sailed for Spain, found the Americas, well, because the weather sucked. But the stream of people to the Americas didn't stop there. Spain and Portugal bickered over newly discovered land, and in the Treaty of Tordesillas, given by Pope Alexander VI in 1493, the new land was divided between them. This would turn out to be a pretty sucky deal for Portugal because there is a lot of land that they didn't account for. Spain came into contact with two of the largest empires at the time, the Aztec and the Inca, who were both very weak from internal disputes and famine, and European disease killed tens of thousands. They were toppled by conquistadors Hernán Cortés and Francisco Pizarro respectively. This rapid conquest led to the creation of new trade routes, and with new trade comes new stuff. Enter the Colombian Exchange. It was the name given to everything that was exchanged between the old and new worlds, and included everything tangible and intangible. Important things brought to the new world include diseases, most notably smallpox, but also chickens, cows, pigs, and horses. While goods brought from the old world to the new world include corn, potatoes, chocolate, sugar, tobacco, and tomatoes for the pizza! We've come full circle. But we've got one more thing to discuss. How were the Renaissance and the Age of Exploration connected? Large parts of the motivation for the Age of Exploration can be summed up in three simple words. God, glory, and gold. And that glory is really important for humanism, because humanism was a lot about finding your own way and your own personal glory. And of course, money from the New World meant more wealthy patrons and more scholars and artists. And new crops from the New World, like corn and potatoes, allowed for more nutrient as harvest, which could feed more people, and less people had to be farmers, and more people could do stuff. Stuff, of course, meaning like art and learning. So in conclusion, the Renaissance was a myth, and Christopher Columbus really did sail the ocean blue. That's everything you needed to know about the Renaissance and the Age of Exploration. 
to the next time we're going to talk about colonization. But until then, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.